that mm. you would be attacking and looking to score? Um, sorry, I lost my voice halfway through the game, but uh, no, nah, I don't think uh, our game plan was pretty was coming out. You know, shooting threes. It's just uh, me and Javon were reading the game and. And uh, credit to the team, you know, we, we moved the ball side to side and we got great looks and, you know, that's what you get reps up for. That's what you, uh, that's what you watch film for and we were just ready to knock them down and it just happened to, you know, come our way. So, you know, credit to the rest of the team for, you know, finding us and, you know, credit to me and Vaughn, you know, just for being ready to knock them down. But I was just reading the defense. Javon, did it seem like there was more movement away from the ball tonight than you've had in a while? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, and it especially starts at practice. We had a good week of practice. You know, we got after it, and you know, we really like locked in. You know, we know we pride ourselves on defense and rebounding, but we worked a lot on our offense this week as well, and it, it showed tonight for sure. You guys had a season high turnovers, twenty one at USC. Obviously, it's a double overtime game, but tonight only four. And I'm talking a lot about the ball movement. And, and is that just kind of a product of that? And, and how nice is that to hear just four total turnovers for the team? Oh yeah, coach challenged us. Um, because he watched New Mexico play Colorado State, and uh, he was talking about how they have four turnovers. So it was nice to go out there and kind of, you know, um, live up to his expectations or what he wanted. And uh, But I think just this team, you know, we did a great job of being patient tonight, um, being well-disciplined and not forcing things, you know, finding guys when they're open and making 100% passes. Javon, what's the key for you guys defensively tonight, um, especially guarding the three-point line, you held them four for 23. They hurt you there in Salt Lake City. Uh, how are you guys able to turn around here tonight? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we didn't play Utah not too long ago, so Utah was uh, kind of fresh in our minds. Uh, we know we know the personnel. Um, that's a big thing that uh, Coach prides, you know, everything on is just knowing your personnel, knowing who can, who's a shooter, who's a driver, and you know we really locked in. And uh, tonight it showed. And you know, Madsen got hot there early. We made some adjustments, and you know, we were able to, you know, shut him down. And I'm not, I'm not sure how many points he had in the second half, but it wasn't uh, compared to his first half points at all. This game kind of felt like a must win if you want to think mm -hmm. about March at all. Mm -hmm. Is that in the front of y'all's minds and for the rest of this, these uh, games on the schedule? Yeah, I, I mean, we're not oblivious to it, you know, but um, I think the main thing is, you know, just taking it game by game. Uh, we can't, you know, focus on anything ahead right now, you know. Uh, when you start doing that, that's when you lose easy games that you should be winning or, you know, close games that you should be winning. And uh, we just want to take it game by game. So next opponent is who we focus on. But at the same time, you know, we, we understand what's at stake and we want to uh, take advantage of our opportunities. Javon, you talk game plan and kind of strategizing defensively. Brennan Carlson, Utah's most efficient shooter, only six points tonight. What was the game plan around him? Um, just limiting his touches. Um, you know, he can't score if he doesn't have the ball. Um, you know, we talk about that all the time, and you know, Tristan did a good job early. You know, just uh, getting him out of it. You know, he got a couple shots up, but you know, they weren't falling, so he kind of shot away from it. And you know, just shout out to our um, our defense overall because we've been working on it. We know we are aware of him. We're aware, obviously, of what he can do. And you know, he's hurt a lot of teams this year, so you know, we couldn't let that happen to us tonight. Guys, looking at a free review. Um, looking at next week, you've got you've gone on a kind of Thursday, Saturday schedule since the start of Pac-12. You got a couple guys banged up. What, if anything, uh, adjustment-wise, do you guys have to make going going Wednesday and Sunday this upcoming week? Um, well, we don't know anything yet, so just expecting, you know, the full team to be ready and uh, just understanding that towards this part of the season, it's all about taking care of your body and, you know, training like a pro in a sense, you know, understanding what you need to get out of the practices. If you need extra treatment, going to get extra treatment and um, doing the things that you need to do in order to get better for the next game. And uh, our mentality, you know, doesn't change. Like Vaughn said, we had a great week of practice this weekend. We want that same type of approach, and if guys are, you know, banged up, then at that point, just next man up. You know, anybody with that, that Colorado jersey is more than capable. KJ, okay, this is now 30 and 28 in back-to-back -back games after you had four at UCLA. I mean, how much yeah. was that on your mind after the UCLA game, just kind of flushing that and getting back to the player you have been throughout the whole season? Yeah, I mean, uh, no, I just, you know, credit to UCLA. They uh, – I didn't want to take, you know, four shots. They did a great job guarding me. And, but at the same time, you know, in my mind, I wasn't as aggressive. Um, and I, I kind of felt I t took that loss and I took accountability of it and, you know, wanted to come out and, um, you know, do more for my team um, with that sense of feeling that I had. And, you know, it feels good to go out there and, you know, just play for my teammates and 
um, back in uh, USC, just play f in front of my family, you know, things like that. When you play for people other than yourselves, you know, good things tend to happen, and I'm just trying to do that right now. Jamal, what was it like watching Cody kind of gut through that in the second half? Obviously, it, it looked like he just kind of rolled his ankle, and then he comes back out there. I mean, what were you guys saying to him in the locker room, and then as he's out there, clearly not 100% in the second half? Yeah, I mean, it just um, credit to him, you know, his toughness and, you know, just his uh, ability to just, you know, put the team first. Um, you know, we need him. Um, you know, he does a lot of good things for us, you know, um, in every aspect of the game. And he understands that. And, you know, he's, he's a tough player. So, you know, it showed, it showed tonight when he uh, rode his ankle and came back uh, right away. Anything else for the players real quick? Okay. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, you go into these games uh, this time of year in, in mid-February and um, you don't expect, you know, to, to win going away by, you know, we were up 30 at one point and uh, kind of limped out there when we when we subbed. But, uh, but yeah, it was a great, you know, just a great performance by our guys. I thought, you know, the two guys that were here, KJ was KJ tonight, you know, was doing what he's doing all year for us. And Javon Hadley was phenomenal both offensively and defensively. Uh, you know, we we made the switch to put him on Madsen in the second half. Uh, Cody rolled his ankle, um, so he was he was not at 100 percent. We started a game with him, you know, on Madsen, and he had 16 in the first half, and he ended up ends up with 18. So uh, credit goes to 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 uh, Javon with his defensive effort, and again, uh, Tristan De Silva. I know he didn't shoot the ball well tonight, but his defensive uh, presence on Brandon Carlson was terrific and, and he got some help. You know, we want to make Brandon Carlson feel uncomfortable when he catches the ball on the block. He's seven feet tall. He's really skilled. And we also want to make him feel uncomfortable on the perimeter when he catches it. So guys did a good job of that. Um, it was just a good win, you know, for, for February. 19 assists, four turnovers. And I told Mark Johnson on the radio, obviously my begging, literally begging this team to take care of the ball finally worked, <laughs> took most of the season and certainly most of the conference season. But uh, they had to have four, had to have four uh, uh, turnovers in a conference game is pretty special. Dad, you mentioned the four turnovers. I think that's the lowest from, of your tenure here. I think uh, it's the yeah. lowest since 2010 um, in the Big 12 games. So um, what did you like most about what you guys were doing? Uh, Tristan had a couple of assists early. Eddie, it's yeah. like all the, everybody was kind of getting I thought our movement was really good offensively. Our move, you know, we, sometimes we have a tendency to get stagnant, um, and I thought our movement away from the ball, our cutting, uh, our passing was sharp. We've really worked on passing. We've Again, we've been emphasizing it. I mean, I, you know, the, the the smart ass of me wants to say that our assistants were in charge of turnovers against USC, and I took over tonight. But the the bottom line is, like our players just made you know they made simple plays, and uh, and I thought a couple of the turnovers we had, we could get rid of those. You know, it's like you're going to have some, you know, whether it's an illegal screen or maybe a offensive foul, and you know that sort of thing. But no, it was uh, it was it was a good. Good, uh, good to see that happen. So now we know we can do it, and uh, it's gonna, not that we're going to have four every night, but we want that number to be 11 or less. It seemed like your guards had a scoring mentality tonight. Yeah. They were looking to score right from the outset. Yeah. Was that the idea? Go yeah, ahead. we wanted to be aggressive. Um, we want to really put pressure on Utah. Utah really, when we played them in Salt Lake, Sandy, they, they really get out and – and pressure the passing lane, so we thought we could try to get downhill on them. Uh, I thought, you know, we screened. Eddie, Eddie screened well. He rolled well. Uh, the way they guard KJ in ball screens is a little different than most teams have guarded him. You know, they really show hard and almost almost double team him. And KJ did a great job when they did that of getting off the ball, which is what you need to do. And then the big is rolling, 
their big has to catch up with them. And then we got to get the ball moving. And, and we did a great job of that. Got some uh, wide open threes uh, in the first half and, and a couple in the second. So yeah, our passing was on point tonight. And, and our guards, you know, KJ's always aggressive. That's just who he is. Uh, we want Cody to be aggressive under control. And, and Javon Hadley, his, his game is just evolving, you know. You can't even consider him a big anymore. Although, you know, I always tell him I, I don't want him to, you know, forget about, you know, the post moves because when he gets mismatches on him, you know, he, he's pretty good down there. Not that we're playing through him in the post, but he gets a guard on him. He can, he can do some damage down low. We saw Cody kind of favoring that ankle a bit yeah. in the second half. How is he doing right now? And what do you think? He's doing fine, yeah. It swelled up a little bit, so we just got to get the swelling out. But the good thing is, is you know, I talked to Raleigh, our trainer, and it's not, it's not real tender. It's not, you know, real painful. But we just got to get the swelling out, and uh, hopefully, yeah, he showed great toughness. I thought coming back uh, in the second half was obviously wasn't a hundred percent. We needed him uh, with Julian going down yesterday in practice. I mean, it's just this. I've never been through a uh, Raleigh Klingsmith might be our MVP, our trainer. I mean, he's just, he's got his hands full every single day, you know. I mean, it was a non-contact thing with Julian in practice. It's not like we were, you know, going up and down and going full speed. It was just a freak deal. So, um, we need to get healthy, no doubt. Coach, these games kind of feel like must wins at this point if you want to think about March. Is that something you want to keep in the front of your minds of your players? No, no. I, I, I'll be honest with you. You know, I was talking to a coaching friend of mine um, who's not in the business anymore um, yesterday, and, and uh, I think too much emphasis is put on the NCAA tournament. It, we, they start talking about it in November. Like, and I, I know our guys are aware of it. I'm aware of it. You know, I know we have Ken Palm ratings and net ratings and all that stuff. I still don't understand the net. I mean, it's just – and, and it's, it's been favorable to us, you know. Uh, so it's not like – but I just – I just think it's talked about too much. Like, we got selection Sunday. We know when it is. This is a long season. Everybody's got 31 regular season games. Like, we got four left. Like, how we play down the stretch is going to determine, you know, what our chances are. So I'm not, I'm not trying to be naive and stick my head in the sand, but I just, I just think, you know, the, the key for me as a coach, you just want to make sure your players are you're getting better. You're improving, you know. And that's why practices, you know, our practices aren't long uh, right now this time of year. But I told our team this week, I thought we practiced really well. We had a great practice on Thursday. Uh, didn't go real hard real long yesterday, but our guys were dialed into the scouting reports. So that's what you want as a coach. You want to see your team playing better, you know, as the season rolls, rolls on. Some of that has to do with schedule. You know, you, you run into a UCLA team who's really, really playing well right now. And you got to win the ones you're supposed to win. You got to. Sneak a couple, you're not. But the schedule, I think, favors us down the stretch. But no game's going to be easy. And uh, so it's all about trying to win on Wednesday. That's all we got to worry about. Not that other stuff, that's for you guys. How close are you to feeling that your team has come together, certainly in these yeah. last couple of games? Yeah, I, th I think, look, our guys, they like each other off the court. There's good synergy. Sometimes we. You know, we talked about playing connected defensively tonight. We fought, we did that, you know, especially in the second half. First half, not as much. But, yeah, this team, you know, we're, we're, we're not the deepest team we've ever had here at Colorado. So, you know, it's funny. I, I, I was looking at the stats today. I don't think in, in our 14 years here that I've, I've been at Colorado, I don't, I don't think we've had anybody in the top 15 in the league in minutes per game. Even when McKinley was here, you know, he wasn't in the top 15. We have three guys in like the top five or six because we're, we're having – KJ's got to play heavy minutes. Javon Hadley's got to play heavy minutes. Tristan's got to play heavy minutes. Eddie, you know, is a big guy. He's 265 pounds. It's hard for him to play 35 minutes a game, you know. So that's why we need Javon Ruffin. We need Hassan Jope. We need, you know, Julian Hammond back. We, we – and, and – because – we're not as deep as we've been, but that depth is really important to us. And when we get our top seven that are healthy and clicking, but 28 games, 27, 27 four, 14, our top seven has been available. So that just tells you the kind of year we've had. Look, we're not the only ones. Oregon's gone through it like other teams have gone through it. And I look at other teams, man, they've had the same starting five all year. Same like 
have had no injuries. It's just, it's just part of the game. I'm not, and I'm, we never use it as an excuse. It's just, it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge for our players, and it's been a challenge for our coaching staff. But I'm really proud of our guys to, to win a game like this when you're not at full strength. And uh, it says something about your, your guys and their togetherness. What is the uh, prognosis on Julian? Chance we'll see him next week? Or? I, I, think, I hope so. You know, his knee's sore. But, you know, the good, the good news is the imaging was good. You know, uh, I talked to Raleigh, our trainer. We just, it's, it's, he's in pain. But uh, the swelling is not, you know, crazy. So I'm just hoping, you know, each day gets a little bit better and better. And because and, uh, he, you know, he can make shots and he gives us a guy down the stretch that has been in big games. And Julian Hammond is important to this basketball team and basketball program, without a doubt. KJ's game against UCLA, where he just had four points, was so rare. And then he's bounced back to <coughs> 30 and 28 in these last two games. Is that just another sign of? How much he's progressed in this true season, just the bounce back he's had. In yeah, I mean, the thing about KJ, he's 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 so tough-minded, and he's just like he never has a bad day or a bad game in terms of his motor and his energy and his enthusiasm. He's become a great leader. I think the biggest thing is sometimes he gets caught in a a trap of he is aggressive, and we want him to be aggressive. We want him to be a downhill player, and we need him to score the ball. But he also has to distribute the ball. And I think the, the key for any point guard, whether, you know, and we've had some pretty good ones here, <laughs> you know, when you think about Spencer and Derek and McKinley, is finding that balance because we want them to be scores. They need to score for us, but they also have to find, well, hey, Eddie hadn't gotten it touched. Uh, Javon Hadley just hit a three. Tristan, we got to get him going. We gotta, they got to think about uh, outside of themselves, and that's what, that's what KJ started to do this year that – but yeah, we we needed him to score tonight. We needed him against you. We needed him against UCLA. UCLA just had a hell of a game plan, and the game plan was he needs to give it up, you know. And and he only took seven shots against UCLA. So he's I can't say enough about KJ Simpson. He he's playing like an All American. Bottom line, he gets he gets no gets no national love at all, which really pisses me off. But whatever. Thank you guys.